today, I want to do a piece on a neighbor, one of the most notorious neighborhoods in Compton, on a guy that I met in 4800 and in the feds. His name is Wood Rat from Nutty Block. Everybody known him as a mover and a shaker. I met him back when I was in my 20s. And I didn't know that later on I would be meeting him in the feds after he uh, got a federal case. Make sure you lock the door, man. And uh, when I was in uh, Leavenworth, I ran into Woody. She called it Wood Rat. And uh, he was telling me that uh, Every year he had to go get his leg uh, remeasured, and uh, he was telling me that he had uh, ran across my crime partner, which is a guy out of Fort Worth named Doug, and he was telling me that uh, they was kind of good friends, and he was always uh, asking me, you know, about Doug, and I told him yes, my crime partner, but he saw always my crime partner saw always tell him that he knew me, and uh, he knew me from. Uh, being in Texas, I was a crip out of L.A., and um, that was his crime partner. But uh, he, he, Woody really didn't remember me, so we always he always used to uh, talk up to Doug about that. So one day we was talking in the gym. I had never seen a guy uh, this strong, this cut up. He was benching over four something, and uh, I used to sit back in the gym, and I used to uh, watch him. And he used to be benching for something. And a lot of guys that was up there with us was benching in the force. But this guy, Woodrat, out of Nutty Block, uh, is one of the most notorious guys that I met. I had always heard about him, but I had never really seen him that much, but only in 4,800. But now we was on the same yard together. And we used to work out together. Or sometimes we used to work out. And... Uh, he always was talking about, you know, hood, Compton, L.A., and the Grandies, and uh, all other hoods in uh, Compton. And I used to always tell him, man, I'm one of the only guys that kind of like had a court case in Compton. I got caught over there in a certain area where you go to, you go to Compton Court. And uh, he was telling me that when he went to Springfield to get his leg uh, measured, uh, my crime partner, they had special clothes there, and when Woody went there, my crime partner was sending money to buy the special clothes there to bring back to uh, El Reno so they can um, so they can change them and set up. They had special sweatsuits, and uh, Woody uh, he always would you know do business with my uh, crime partner. Then I come to know him real good, and then uh, not only that, we always talk about baby gangster uh, guys from Compton, uh, Santana, Black Lantana, Spring Street, Spark Street. And we always talk about the, uh, uh, we had a car lot called Superior Motors. We used to always talk about Alameda and the old DMV and how uh, he had uh, actually lost his leg and things like that. But he was a real soldier. And I ended up running into him and be, uh, be able to uh, talk to him about the east side of Compton and east side of LA. And, and we was in 4800 and what we used to talk about and what we used to do. And we used to always uh, talk about certain things that was in the state. And while we, while he was in the state, uh, he was talking about how, you know, they, they had different things going on. But to make a long story short, he always had some nice cars. He always did, you know, a bunch of things. And he always, like, was a top guy in the, in the Compton car, which is uh, I got familiar with Nutty Block because uh, I had a girlfriend that lived on, uh, she lived up on Central somewhere by the McDonald's over there by the airport. They got an airport, a private airport right there in Compton. And I used to always talk about this girl named Michelle that I used to go over her house. I think she used to mess with a guy named Squirrel from back in the days. But uh, I ended up running into Woody again and uh, I think it was uh, Atwater or either Lump, Atwater or either Victorville. And while we was in Victorville, he, you know, he was telling me he had went to the streets and uh, he come back on the violation. Matter of fact, we was in uh, Atwater together. And uh, we used to talk about, you know, what we was going to do when we get out and how he got out. And he was, uh, <clears throat> you know, 
went back to the neighborhood and how a lot of things has changed. But uh, I didn't really know about this area until I started messing with this girl, Michelle, and she was telling me that this, this is Nutty Block area and this is Nutty Block hood. And uh, it's a guy, a lot of guys over here, you know, that's got a big neighborhood over there. And um, I used to be, I used to go over there at nighttime a little bit, but I never really ran into a lot of them. I ran into some of them at the store and like walking down the street, stuff like that. But, um, you know, Will Rat would always, he was a legend from uh, Nutty Block. And uh, I, I, uh, I ended up running into some more Nutties, uh, some, some guys named Nutty, Tiny, and all those guys. But, you know, uh, I always uh, uh, liked it, uh, to uh, talk to Woody because he, uh, he was always had good information and he had good uh, wisdom and he had good uh, knowledge on uh, the area and the gang culture and how he came up and how he made a name for himself in Compton. And uh, I can guess he had an accident and lost one of his legs. But this guy, man, is a special guy out of Compton. I ran into a lot of guys from Compton, but I I, uh, I ran into this guy. He had dreads too. This was before I had my dreads. And this guy, man, he was just a special guy. And when we was in uh in Atwater, you know, uh, we we got to uh, be familiar with each other on uh, different things. And I just liked the way uh, you know he carried himself. And he already carried himself in a special way because I know uh, a lot of guys that was from Compton that I ran into, uh, JJ and um, a lot of guys that uh, I ran into that uh, remind me of this guy. I ran into Smoke, a few guys, but I didn't know that it was that many hoods in Compton until I ran into this guy. And he's kind of like educated me on uh, different things, the Nutty Block and, and Santana and Lantana and um, uh, the neighborhood, they got some neighborhoods out there in Front Street, uh, I think it was front back, one in front, front hood, one of those guys, one of those things. And I just uh, was educated on Compton, but I did know that uh, uh, he was from Nutty Block. And, that, and not only that, I ended up uh, running into him again in the, in the Victorville. While we was in Victorville, we would always talk about, you know, uh, I had ran into H and um, a few other guys. It was a lot of guys there from, from, from Compton. It was, uh, I think it was Baby Gangster there, uh, 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 L from Compton, uh, Snake. Uh, uh, this was before a lot of these guys got there, but I ran into uh, uh, Free Bowl, both of Free Bowls. Uh, a lot of the guys from Compton, man, you know, Compton, they have a lot of guys, man, that they be in the system real deep, and I ended up running into a lot of them, but uh, me and the men, me and, uh, what he used to talk, we used to always talk about, you know, what's going to be the next thing uh, big inside of Los Angeles or Compton that's that's going to be able to get us uh, together and be able to be unified. And I see a lot of times now that a lot of things that these rappers are doing, I see a thing with uh, the guy uh, just did a thing, a uh, uh, boy from uh, Top Dog Entertainment. I just seen him get together with a lot of Crips and Bloods on stage celebrating uh uh, the events and stuff like that because, you know, we have been in the feds for 30-some years and we have been doing a lot of uh, building and Kendrick Lamar, uh, we are doing a lot of building and we have been uh, talking to the Bloods, we have been talking to every all the gangs in LA, the Mexican gangs, the, uh, the black gangs, the, all of the Samoans, we have been talking to a lot of the different gang members inside of prisons and now I see now after all of these years I see a lot of guys celebrating I see a lot of guys that's uh, really into the culture because at the end of the day, man, they locked all of us up in the state. They locked all of us up in the feds. And now a lot of us is coming home and we're older. We got grandkids and we have low recidivism. And we just wanted to be able to get out, man, and live our life the rest of our lives because a lot of us is in our 60s. And we want to be able to get out and live the rest of our lives in peace and harmony and be able to uh, talk to some of the guys that we did time uh, with, it's just like us coming back from Vietnam. We had uh, come back with all these these sentences, these long sentences. And uh, when me and Woody was talking about, you know, uh, what what is it going to take for us to actually be able to uh, come back into the community and be able to get some real estate and be able to buy some of the property that we lost and uh, get some of these houses back and get some of these businesses back. But uh, this is the piece that I wanted, I, I've been trying to do for a while. I've been um, stuck on... Uh, uh, on some other projects, and I just wanted to do this, do this one on the Nutty Block neighborhood and Wood Rat, they call him Woody, and uh, be able to uh, uh, talk to uh, a lot of the guys that I know that I know him, that respected him. Uh, I had talked to Wack and a few other guys. I talked to uh, a boy named Bob out of Compton, 
and uh, we all we all agree that you know some of these guys, man, is, have never have never been able to be in the light. They don't want to be in the light, but they have never had a chance to have their name spoken up. Today, I want to do one on um, Woody Woodbrad, Nutty Block, Compton. 